very good afternoon to all of you. Um, I'm Rajesh Vasudevan, the head of school of Manchester International School, the premium school in Kaibatur in Tamil Nadu, offering both the international curriculum, the international baccalaureate, uh, the first of its kind, a continuum school, that means which offers all the three programs of the IB in Kaibatur, the fourth in Tamil Nadu, the 36th school in India to offer this premium curriculum. And we also have the CBSC program parallelly running in the same campus. We are here in Kaibato since 2000, uh, for the last 10 years, and it's been a great journey ever since. I welcome each and every one of you to this great afternoon, uh, rather evening, uh, on a, such, such a special topic. Over the last couple of years, we have been, uh, we have developed bad habits, uh, or rather, uh, bad conditions, uh, health styles. And we have tried to uh, ensure that, the, that there's something that we can do about it so that we get back to a very healthy life. It was that thought that got us closer to Ramakrishna Hospital with Health Basics. And we decided to co-join uh, or collaborate with them. I need not talk about Ramakrishna Hospital because that's a name that goes with health, quality, and expertise. So I shouldn't be adding any adjectives to that. That would be very, very unfair of me to do that. But still, Ramakrishna Hospital is a name to record with quality health services. So we have this tie-up with Ramakrishna Hospitals, um, providing, it's not just the physical well-being, the mental well-being is also taken care of. That was one of the prime requirements that, when, uh, that we had when we met the uh, Ms. Swati and Mr. Ram Kumar, uh, Mr. Almol, and the entire team. And ever since we feel the warmth of the Ramakrishna hospitals, uh, it's such a delight to have uh, Dr. Gopal Krishnan here this afternoon with us. Um, I shouldn't be talking much because I'm sure that this one hour session that's going to start from now on is going to be to all of us and provide some tips to my children, the parents, the teachers, and to all of those who are attending this conversation, this talk today, to develop, to keep the body in alignment with the soul. Over to Ramakrishna Hospital, and the podium is all yours. Thank you, Mr. Rajesh. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, I'm Purnima Raja, and uh, I head the operations at Sri Ramakrishna Hospital. Uh, we welcome you all to our first health talk in the series, Taking Care of Human Factors. At the outset, I would like to thank the management of Man Manchester International School and Health Basics for arranging this. I'm going to take just two minutes, a uh, quick two minutes, to introduce Sri Ramakrishna Hospital to you. I am sure uh, the principal has already spoken about it. But uh, just to give you a brief um, outline of what and who we are. We are a thousand bed um, multi-speciality facility, which is run by the SNR Sons Charitable Trust. At SRH, we, we treat several thousands of patients year after year. We have well-established departments such as orthopedics, cardiology, oncology, neurosciences, and of course, pediatrics. We use state-of-the-art technology and cutting-edge medical and surgical interventions to treat our patients. And it gives us immense pride to be associated with Manchester International School through Health Basics. Through the series of health talks, we hope to meet your needs and become your preferred health partner to serve you better. Sri Ramakrishna ha Hospital will be happy to be your one-stop shop for all your medical needs. So to begin our series, I take this opportunity to introduce to you all Dr. Gokul. We fondly call him as Dr. Gokul. Dr. R. Gokulakrishnan is a senior consultant and an orthopedic surgeon at Sri Ramakrishna Hospital. He's a specialist in joint replacement, sports injury management, complex fracture surgeries, and treatment of geriatric surgeries and the fractures associated. 
So I'm going to take this time to tell you, just relax, unwind, and enjoy this session. Now over to Dr. Gokul. Purnima, uh, I just would like to, before Dr. Gokul takes over the, uh, the screen, I would like to uh, introduce uh, um, uh, my team uh, to all of us. Uh, I have with me uh, Mrs. Jayanti Robert, the, the principal of the CBSE uh, program. And along with that, we have uh, Mrs. Gita Kopinathan, the head of admissions, Mr. Kishore, the head of market uh, administration and student school development. We also have Mr. Mukesh, the vice principal, uh, Ms. Neelima, I can see Ms. Neelima here, she is the associate coordinator of the middle year program of the International Baccalaureate. Mr. Ashok, uh, the DP coordinator. Uh, is Dr. Menon there? Right, so that's the team that is attending from our side. Uh, Ms. Aishwarya, the director of marketing will be joining us very soon. Uh, Dr. Gokul Krishnan, such a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, the stage is all yours. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Gokul Krishnan, uh, consultant orthopedic surgeon of Sri Ramakrishna Hospital. And I'm a consultant with special interest in joint replacement surgery and uh, sports medicine and geriatric fracture management and uh, complex fracture treatment. I'm in this institution since uh, 2001. As a medical officer, I joined here and uh, since 2010, I've become a registrar and uh, I've become a consultant since 2014. And this institute, you know very well, we are a uh, thousand bed hospital serving the Coimbatore people since uh, the past 40 years. And uh, we have, uh, we have uh, performed uh, so more than 1000 joint replacement surgeries for the past 10 years with a good uh, survival result. And today I'm here to talk about an interesting topic, which is the need of the hour, uh, which probably, which should start from the childhood days. That is, uh, from the younger days, we should learn about the ergonomics of uh, human uh, uh, occupation. So what is ergonomics? Uh, so soon we'll know about it. I'll do a brief introduction. And uh, after me, we have our chief uh, physiotherapist, Mr. Sita Raman, who will uh, guide you in uh, the exercises and subsequent uh, ergonomic management, which is commonly called as human factor. See, ergonomics is nothing but it's a branch of science that aims at making the uh, people do more efficient work in their working environment. So we have to design the work environment to the worker so that we can extract the more efficient output. So here, since it, it is work related, what is to do with school children? See, obviously, in this pandemic, almost all the schools and uh, all the institutions are conducting online classes. So we are stuck with the uh, computer or laptop or mobile phones for long hours. So people, I see a lot of, I, mean, I see more patients in my OPD the school children, college uh, students all coming for uh, the, the treatment for the neck pain, back pain and a lot of uh, other skeletal muscular problems. So, so the, um, the importance of ergonomics is uh, gaining in the school children. So it is nothing but to learn the human abilities and limitations and apply that learning in creating a system for the individual to perform better. So the ergonomist designs or modifies the work to fit the worker or in other words, we should create an environment for the children so that they are more comfortably listening to the classes and more attentive and the, their performance better. So, and also the ultimate goal is to eliminate the discomfort in the work or attending classes and the subsequent micro injuries which will happen in the body has to be overcome. So why it is important to follow ergonomics in school children? See, uh, what disadvantage we get when you have a discomfort in the uh, posture, when you are attending classes or uh, doing any uh, reading or even drawing, painting or any kind of school activities. So naturally you tend to get early fatigue and discomfort. And uh, the inattention to the classes is commonly uh, made out in online classes. 
and some kids will develop uh, involuntary uh, uh, movements like uh, wiggling and fidgeting and involuntary movements of the upper limb and finally they end up in developing core weakness of the neck and back and which ends up in causing more degeneration in the subsequent years and many kids will get uh, visual disturbances due to long hours of exposure to the screen computer screen or the led exposure so in this context we should learn more about the active sitting so what is active sitting so it is nothing but it's a micro movements which is happening in the individual while in a seated position which will help in the physical and the mental benefit so uh, should know about the active sitting so many children will keep moving in the uh, chair they make some micro movements so which is probably uh, uh, you know which we may see it is an unwanted thing but actually that is good for them so you cannot sit idle like a robot so you should make some movements which probably will happen uh, involuntarily so we should train them to make that movements more beneficial like you know we should uh, teach them the core exercises for the neck and back and shoulders and the lower limb so that they do that that uh, core group of muscle constantly used during the class which we will teach in subsequent uh, slides i would like to show the video for active sitting yeah this would have uh, made a uh, made you understand what is active sitting so you need not be uh, passively or inactively sitting in a chair and listening classes you should keep some movements happening in your core muscles so that you know the the long term benefits are uh, are best so in this context of uh, ergonomics we should all know about the school backpacks i uh, generally when i was a school children uh, school child i was carrying a lot of books naturally which will amount uh, 10 to 15 kilograms of uh, you know the entire uh, uh, the bag so ideally what is the weight the child should carry in case when they go to school so now being online classes that is not a problem but still they should know so generally it should be 15 percentage of the body weight which is the optimal weight to be carried by any kid to to go to the school so naturally when they are 50 kilograms of weight they should carry 7.5 kg on average so where uh, generally our school children carry more weight backpacks so we should uh, the school management should formulate such that they should carry the required books and so that the weight does not cross the 15 percentage mark of the weight in general so since uh, this pandemic a lot of uh, i mean almost all the classes are online and uh, we are stuck to the system computer laptop or mobile phones long of us so we should know the basics of the computer ergonomics where uh, the viewing distance the screen should be at the one arm distance for any kid the system should be kept one arm distance away and the top of the screen should be at the eye level so that they won't bend hunch too much and uh, and what is the keyboard generally there are ergonomic keyboards available in the market so which has tilting adjustments are available and that should be kept on the desktop which should be uh, 2 inches above the elbow level so that the shoulder won't be strained too much and it will avoid damage to the joints of the hand and wrist and uh, there are ergonomically designed mouses available uh, the size might differ for the kids so accordingly it is kept and it is kept on the desktop so 
so that uh, the elbow is kept in a 90 degree to 100 degree uh, bending. So you need not uh, hang the elbow down. So keep the elbow on the study platform and use the mouse. And uh, the foot should be rested. The foot, which uh, generally uh, should not hang in the dangle in the air, it has to be rested on a footrest or on the floor to avoid uh, the circulatory problems in the foot. And the children should uh, sit upright. The back of the children should be seated on the back of the chair with the shoulders rested on the uh, back and the arm should be kept in the arm rest. Uh, that should also be a height adjustable arm rest where it will uh, keep the elbow in 90 to 100 degree flexion so that there won't be much strain to the shoulder and elbow. And in between the classes, uh, you take a break, you stretch your uh, body by doing head rolls, shoulder rolls, or even you can march in the same place, which our therapist will uh, help you to learn about it. And this way, while doing this uh, uh, stretching exercises, we can avoid pressure to the uh, body parts. And uh, regarding the, the eyesight, since uh, the LED screens are more uh, harmful to the eye for long hours of exposure, you should take a break every 20 minutes. We follow this rule, 20, 20, 20 rule. It's not T20, it's a triple 20. So where, you know, every 20 minutes, you should take a break and you should stare at the wall, which is 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Then you can start your work back. Maybe this cannot happen in uh, online classes. So, but generally the teachers also can follow this uh, uh, 2020 rule where when the exposure is more than 20 minutes, give a break for 20 seconds and make them stare at the wall for 20 uh, seconds, which is 20 feet away, which will avoid a strain to the eye and uh, maybe the headaches and such problems cannot happen. And there is a, a terminology called Pomodoro technique where you take a break for every 25 minutes or 30 minutes. So if the class is going to happen for one hour, you take a break in between at the 25th minute or 30 minute, a break for five minutes. The break can be used to have a coffee, to drink water, or to do some exercises being seated. So this can be uh, considered and this will improve the, the performance of the kid uh, during the class. So the breaks can be helpful in physical and psychological benefits are there, which can happen in every 20 to 30 minutes. And what is the ideal sitting posture for the children? So generally, we follow the rule 90-90-90. So if you note here, the hip is placed in 90 degree, the knee is kept in 90 degree, and the ankle foot is also kept in 90 degrees. So by keeping this way, you are avoiding strain to the low back to the knee and the foot. So this is the ideal 90-90-90 posture, which has to be adopted in uh, every uh, children. And this image shows the, uh, the incorrect and correct posture. See the right side, uh, the back of the individual is kept as close to the, uh, the back of the chair and the foot is rested well. Whereas in the right, the left side, the, the, the individual is hunching too much and also tilting to the sides. So during the childhood days, we should constantly, voluntarily follow this posture so that when in subsequent uh, months and years, we develop a, a involuntary correct posture to avoid the subsequent damage to your back and the neck. And these are the common mistakes. So we try to uh, slouch back. When you slouch back, the strain comes to the lower back region and we, we develop a low back pain early. And when you hunch forward, you develop a shoulder and neck pain in the early days. So these things to be avoided. And this image shows a, uh, an illustrative diagram where the chair is height adjustable, the table is height adjustable, and the desktop is tilt adjustable. So based on the kid's height, you adjust the chair first so that the knee is kept in 90 degrees and foot is rested on the ground. Then you adjust the height of the table such that the elbow is kept uh, on the platform of the desk so that it won't be hanging on the air to avoid strain to the shoulders. 
and you can tilt the table according to the need if you are reading you can tilt up to 30 degrees if you are writing 10 20 degrees so accordingly you can change the tilt of the table so such tables have come in the market which will be more useful for long term usage of the system even this can be used while reading for long hours and these are the images of a uh, height adjustable and tilt adjustable desk and chair which is currently available in the market and uh, so the chair design it started uh, for many years the evolution is happening so from 1904 you see the design of the chair and uh, see this current designs so the the chair which has been shown in the picture is a kneeling chair where the knee the knee joint is kept flexed and such chairs will give you the active sitting experience and also the the, the ball the exercise ball is kept in the right side you can see both the chairs have a exercise ball as a, a platform where uh, this will allow and encourage the active sitting so you won't feel the fatigue and tired during long hours of sitting in classroom or working or reading and this picture will show you a lot of ergonomic work stations with accessories see here there are six stands chair is available and the bike desk is available and the treadmill desk is available so we go through this lot of things are there which has been customized according to the individual need of the uh, uh, the persons so what is the take home message see generally generally the ergonomics has been uh, uh, described or developed for people who are working and uh, even there are uh, ergonomics for sports individuals for leisure activity for uh, uh, professional uh, people so the ergonomics for children has come into you know importance last two years so because we see a lot of patients coming to our opd Uh, the school kids college kids you know coming with back pain neck pain shoulder pain all the problems which we were seeing in the elderly now it is started coming to the school children why see because we are not following ergonomics even in school many school won't have a ergonomically designed chair and table see we fix a common table for everyone but the height of the individual will vary see uh, the kids will have a different uh, growth spurts you know generally an average kid will grow 2.5 inches every year so uh, but whereas the school bench and desk will be static which has been formulated the school has been built so probably that may not suit them but now being online classes so now we can customize the chair and table which we uh, use in home use at home so there are ergonomically designed chair and uh, desk available so which we have to create a comfortable work station that is uh, uh, the station where the children are occupied in class which will make them be more attentive and which uh, enhances the performance in their uh, classes and we should make them learn about the dynamic sitting which is the active sitting which we have uh, demonstrated earlier and uh, when they are going to the school the optimal backpack concept will come into play and also they can use the pomodoro technique uh, uh, while attending classes or reading in the system where they should take a break every 25 to 30 minutes and then you know uh, take a break for 5 minutes uh, where they can completely off the task and they do whatever they want they can walk they can read they can drink coffee or juice accordingly take a break for 5 minutes then restart your classes or study which will enhance your performance and by following the 20 20 20 rule you can avoid the eye strain so whenever you are exposed to led screen for 20 minutes on average you take a break for 20 seconds and stare a wall at 20 feet away just stare blank then you can restart your work so which will avoid eye strain and subsequent headache problem and uh, for by following the 1990 90 rule you can avoid the uh, development of back pain neck pain uh, strain to the shoulder and the low back and i would like to uh, show you this video probably you would have all uh, seen this movie
I guess no one will uh, say no. So this movie, this uh, scene has a lot of economics in this. See, the Shibu, the so-called the son of that uh, lady, you know, uh, the lady wanted to pour water to the Shiva statue, uh, so but uh, which needs more effort and strain. Whereas uh, uh, the son designs ergonomically, and so he lifts the statue to the water. So by making the mother more comfortable and uh, stress-free. So the ergonomics is involved here. And also, if you see how he carries the statue, he carries close to the body and uh, keeps the statue over his shoulder. So there is also the ergonomics is followed. So ergonomics is followed everywhere. Now it has become a lifestyle. So it is nothing but, you know, uh, creating the environment where whether you study, you work or you play or it's a professional sports should follow ergonomics everywhere. So avoid injuries, you know, the injury happens uh, commonly because we are following poor ergonomics everywhere. For example, Sachin Tendulkar had tennis elbow for years together and he was suffering. Why he de developed tennis elbow? Because he carried a bat which is too heavy, heaviest of the all cricket players. So uh, he met all the doctors of the world. In fact, he met all the top surgeons of the world. Everyone advised him to carry a lesser weight pad, which probably he was unable to, because from the childhood days he was carrying the heavy pad and he learned that way. So Sachin Tendulkar, in fact, retired due to the tennis elbow problem. So he failed to follow the ergonomics in the childhood days, which subsequently is unable to practice the lighter weight pad while playing cricket. So in his elbow, he underwent three surgeries. In spite of everything, he couldn't get relief the pain. So ergonomics starts from the childhood. So I would all, I mean, I would like uh, I would encourage you all children to follow ergonomics in your classroom, in your house, whatever you do, whether you paint, whether you uh, read, whether you attend classes, or in, even in sports, you follow ergonomics. And uh, now I would uh, I'd like to introduce our uh, chief physiotherapist, Sita Raman sir. He will teach you some exercises. And at the end of the session, we'll have an interactive uh, uh, question and answer session. End of it. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Good afternoon to children. Today, let's speak something about economics for online classes. Okay. I'm Sita Raman. I'm working as a head of the department, physiotherapy, Sri Ramakrishna Hospital. Okay. So let's directly go to the classes. Okay, so here I'm going to speak of really of two terms. One is your posture, other one is your ergonomics. The posture relates to the term in which the, someone holds the body when standing or sitting. The term is referred to as posture. The ergonomics is a term which is designed for the efficiency and comfort in the working environment so that the productivity or efficiency of the students or the workers or everything it will be increased. Okay, the major problems of the students which are facing during online educations are pain, eye strain, headache, and fatigue. I'm just addressing on these factors and I'm going to speak on these factors. The position of gadgets, that is laptop, desktop, and mobile phones, team postures, room brightness, use of audio devices, exercise, eye, food habits, screen time and times. So I am going to speak on these key factors. The first which is I am going to speak on is the question of the gadgets. So which we commonly use the gadgets for the online classes are your desktop, laptop and tablets. Apart from all these things, the desktop is an ideal thing for your online classes because it's ergonomically it's designed and efficiency of the students or staffs can be increased whereas the laptop plays a vital role when in the presentations or preparing the classes for half an hour or one hour maximum usage of the laptop will be half an hour to one hour but in the case of desktop you can use for more than hours because laptop is not ergonomically designed whereas the tab it can use for a maximum of half an hour 
but monotonous than that. Okay, these are the normal postures which we adapt during our online classes. That is lying down in the bed, sitting in the stools, or sitting in the sofas, or sitting in the floors, sitting in the outdoor activities, or sitting near the sunset classes. Okay, these are the normal postures which we adapt during the no online classes. So the doctor has explained you about the correct sitting postures. Okay, these are the correct sitting postures where you, the chair should have armrest. Chair where your elbow should not hang. The elbow hangs extends your shoulders, and your knee and hip and knee should be flexed, and the foot should rest on the floor so that the strains to the back should be reduced. And if you are using a devices of laptop or desktop or things we should modify the devices for the proper ergonomic advices okay in case of using of laptop you can keep a height the laptop can be used as a screen and you can get an extension keyboard and mouse with the extension and keyboard and mouse you can work on the systems okay where it strains less strains to the muscles okay these are the some of the modification devices which you can adapt in the home Okay, so in case of children, if you are using the low desk and high stools, it stains the back a lot. So in that case, you increase the laptop or the height with the help of books or something like that. So increase the height and then get the extension keyboard and mouse and you can work it on it. Or if you are using a high table, okay, so make sure that foot should not hang the floor. You can have a, some blocks and keep the foot over the block so that it will not stain the Back, or in the case you can increase the cushion height of the seat cushion of the height so that the children can place it comfortably. So these are the some of the device modifications. What what why device modification plays a vital role is your device or screen should be straight to the eyes where then you should not have bend in the neck. If you bend down and look for a long time, it changes the neck to a lock and you back. You land up in neck pain. So these are the devices which are available in the market where you can keep the neck straight or erect and you can have a look at the screens. So next we are going to speak on your room brightness or lightning. It plays a vital role in online education. The brightness of the room should be optimal. If there is excessive brightness, there is a, the screen clarity will be very, very less. If less brightness, it strains your eyes and it causes fatigue. So it's determined by many factors, sunlight, such as your sunlight, floor, wall, and paintings. So ideal position of the light should be between your screen and us. The study light or over light, overhead light can be a better choice. Any shadow of the object should not fall on the screen. If it falls, the screen clarity will be very, very less. So next comes your audio devices, which we follow is earphone, headphone, external speakers and mobile speakers. In all these four, headphone plays a vital role where your external voice can be avoided. So you can keep the volume minimal. So it can minimize the damage to the eardrum. So, so by the deafness can be prevented. Apart from this, you can use your mobile phones, speakers or external speakers, which is very, very good apart from this. So exercises plays a vital role. Why the exercise plays a vital role? Because of the online classes, the children are sitting in an abnormal posture for a long time. When the children are sitting in the abnormal posture for a long time, it causes excessive stress to the muscles, thereby the muscle pains are more. So to prevent the muscle pains, so the break exercises are performed during the online classes. The break exercises or exercises should be performed for every one to one and a half hours to maintain the normal posture. The break, some of the break exercises are get up from the chair, go around to 30 to 40 steps and get back to the chair. Break up your sitting time by using rest time, restroom, filling up of the water bottle or grabbing a snack. Stretch up of the shoulders, spine and rotation of the spines. Full squats can be encouraged. 
raising the hands overhead, rotation of the head clockwise and anti-clockwise, shoulder rotations and spinal extension, spine extensions can be encouraged. So these are the some of the brake exercises where you are bending your neck forward and backwards. You are rotating the necks to sideways and you are elevating the shoulders and you are retracting the shoulders where because you are always trying to be in a forward position to prevent the forward position you go for the shoulder retraction exercises. So this is the arm circle, this is the cervical spine rotations, this you should do it on both the sides. This is a leg raise. This is a chair squats, getting up and sitting down in the chairs. And this is a desk dip. These arm curls. This is a calf raise. This is knee lifts. This is a spot jogging. Is hip extension. Is cat and camel exercises. So next, which we are going to talk in uh, talk is on about food habits. The healthy food should be consumed. The food which are rich in proteins should be encouraged. Have plenty of water. Junk should food should be avoided. Have lots of fruits and vegetables. And next, which we are going to start talk is on eye strain. When the eye strain is more, that is fatigue or posture will automatically tend to go into the forward posture, that is your kyphotic position. When there is a kyphotic position, it give strains to the neck a lot. So this will be a triggering factor for your headache and neck pain. What we want to do to prevent the eye strain is Minimize the brightness of the monitor screen or gadgets are below the 50%. Distance between the monitor and us should be 20 inches. Because of online classes, our blink reflexes will be reduced. So if there is a reduced blink reflex, the motion to the eye and eye muscles are reduced. So the fatigability of the eye will be more and it will be lead to the chances for your specs. So you actively you should blink your eyes minimum 5 to 10 times for a per second just a per minute and in case if you are using a mobile phone use full view me full screen view to reduce this curve. eye strain with the mobile stand and you should avoid the rooftop massage in and around the eyes drink plenty of water proper rest to the eyes by being out of the electronic gadgets or closing your eyes for some time and your regular eye exercises. And next, the screen time and size. More the screen time at a particular stretch of time, the more strain to the eyes. At a stretch of maximum 90 minutes can be allowed, followed by a break, and then continue to the work. The bigger the screen, the less strain to the eyes, and smaller screen size, more strain to the eyes. That is, example is your mobiles and tabs. So thank you. Yeah, now you have any questions, you can just post to us. We are here to answer you.
questions now? Uh, hope uh, this session was useful to you, children. And uh, simple take-home message is Uh, Dr. Gokula Krishnan and Sita Raman, that was such a wonderful session that we had. Uh, in fact, we were wondering as to are we doing the right things at school? Because um, in that even uh, economics is something that, uh, as you said, it should become a practice of life for the simple reason that. Today, children suffer not because of academic pressure. Children suffer because of bad postures. And the right demonstration of these postures are not demand, uh, given, uh, are not given any clarity, both at the home level or at the school level. The reason being, uh, children uh, in a classroom for 40 minutes, the teacher expects the attention to be there for quite some time. And any anyone, you know, like when we, any child is getting distracted or making a slight movement, the teacher feels that, that he's not paying attention. This was the scenario in a physical setting. Now, when, moving, when we move to this tech, digital classrooms, virtual lessons, online classes, there's absolutely no control of the posters. You know, when you when we had a slide, when we had a slide on the bad postures or how children attend the online classes, I was taken by surprise because you know it is not just the students, even some of the teachers. <laughs> I've seen them, you know, like when I just walk into the classrooms, the digital classrooms, and you find them even adults doing that. I have um, representing the entire. Uh, fraternity of Manchester International School and to all the parents, my question to you is this Corona, COVID-19, this pandemic situation is going to be here for some more time. It's not going to go out any soon. And the digital classrooms are going to continue. Now the children have been used to this kind of a, a, you know, a scenario where for the last eight months they have been glued to a place, to different postures, and have developed a habit on, of their own. Getting them out of it is going to be a difficult task for us because we don't have control on them. Now, again, we are going to extend this uh, digital classroom for quite some more, for some more time or some more months. As experts in this field, what are your recommendations when it comes to how a class can be structured or designed by the schools in particular so that when we schedule a timetable for the students, we take care of that. Now, for simple reason, what I'm saying is like, for the, for the senior classes, we have classes starting from 8.30, 8.45 in the morning till going till 3.30 in the evening. Of course, we give them five, ten, five to ten minutes of break. But then some teachers, you know, like, oh, you have the ten minutes break, let me continue my class. And they, don't, they just extend the ten minutes. And by the time the child is not given that, you know, the freedom to just three times before he gets into the next class. But this doesn't happen with the smaller ones because whether the teacher is continuing or not, if he wants to take a break, he takes a break and he moves out. Considering all these factors, what you said, I think as a head of school, uh, I have a prime responsibility uh, to make sure that the right poster is demand is given to the students. But that the scheduling is very important. What are your recommendations for a school to consider when they schedule a session for the children? It, it is simple. As we have seen the height adjustable furnitures. So because the, in the same class, people uh, children might be at different heights. No? So we have to design the height adjustable furnitures, customize the furnitures. So you cannot fix the same table for all the children, all the schools, same class. So you buy, 
if the seating arrangement is individual hence for so the individual uh, height adjustable chair and the table will be of great help so that based on the children's height you can adjust the uh, height of the chair and the desk so that they won't feel the discomfort so probably a single long bench and chair where for a, when i was a school student we used to sit five people in the same, same bench and chair you know not this is possible in a when the children are coming to school yeah. when they are at home like when when as a as a as a as a um, you know academic uh, coordinator my uh, middle year program coordinator he schedules a time table for the child without any break or with break or whatever but what else can be done so that the child get some kind of relaxation as you said exercises is one way out of it but what other things can be done so that we take care of these factors while scheduling the time table see you don't make a, a long class maybe the the session can go up to 30 maximum 40 minutes all right see, beyond that i'm looking at the led screen so for example let me tell you see the led exposure when the individual in a healthy individual getting exposed to led for long hours let it be a system let it be laptop or a tv or even mobile phone there is a study where when they get exposed to the system for more than 8 hours a day if they constantly exposed for a month even it will trigger a, an episode of epilepsy that is the fits even the individual can get a fits so it will stimulate the neurons of the brain and it will cause an epilepsy that is a seizure commonly called as the fits so minimize the led exposure by taking break you know 30 minutes maximum 40 minutes let each session go up to 30 40 minutes beyond that when it goes the patient the, the, the student may not be attentive so and uh, naturally the physical strain will be more the eye strain everything will be more and end of the day the the class which probably the teacher has to you know uh, the the, the take home message given to the students might be you know not accepted completely or taken completely so if design such that you know you, you let us go up to 30 40 minutes and uh, make sure that there are physical session even i have two daughters in my house in their uh, physical education program is happening so the, the teacher might be uh, you know sincerely conducting the class but the, my younger daughter my younger daughter is sleeping and uh, switching on the mobile when the, the uh, online platform so which is not correct so we should emphasize the parents should emphasize the children to to, fo- to perform exercises the core exercise the core exercise is very important you know to keep them uh, to attend the class online for long hours and you know, give a break for 30 minutes or 40 minutes maximum <laughs> like that you plan or uh, in between the classes you make sure that they do some exercises for 5 minutes simple exercise what our therapist has uh, taught them that those exercises are more than enough for keeping them attentive to one uh, question that that suddenly came into my mind was um you know boys and girls have separate you know their physiological differences the anatomy is entirely different you know the um do they need to take care like for example a boy uh, you know the, they have a very a casual way of sitting you know and nobody bothers about it and the moment the girl tends to sit like that we say no you're a girl no you need to take care of how you how you first dress does this uh, you know this first dress um or, or any particular style that they do do they affect the genders differently or is it the same for everyone there is no gender specific difference okay it is individualized see there is no hard and fast rule to follow a posture see it is my convenience to sit in whatever way see so it is individualized whether boy or girl that is not matter now see uh, you should keep your all the core muscles uh, you know in in action most of the time so that is the ultimate thing which won't happen just like that it is a, it is a habit it should be made as a habit so we are training them we are training them by doing regular exercises and constant you know voluntary sitting that is called active sitting you make sure that you sit upright and comfortable you know uh, by doing that for a bit of a uh, few weeks or a few months they eventually develop that habit of sitting in a comfortable posture and there is no gender specific difference to be you know advised it is individualized what's it on your thanks sir no any exercise i mean you haven't think to sit up mr sitaram 
Sir, outdoor activities, outdoor exercises plays a vital role. By okay. evening, you can cut short your uh, homeworks or something like that and encourage the children to go for outdoor activities. My children will be happy to hear that. <laughs> ஒரே <laughs> 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 See, all uh, young children, so they can do even yoga. Yoga plays a major role. So yoga asanas with them. Yeah, 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 like that. We were planning to introduce. I mean, we had uh, all these physical education, dance, and yoga at the start of the the you know uh, year. But then Karen's wrote a mail to us saying that oh, you know our children are, for that also they need to sit uh, before the screen and plus your additional classes. So they wanted us to remove all these things from the. from the schedule so we were forced to do that but then now i realize that it is not much about the content what they learn it is about the right living that what they should be learning learning for the you know for them to survive like you know when we have seen the pandemic those who have toned their immunity to that extent are safe and those who have not been so careful about their lifestyles have gone through a mess I mean, i'm just I mean, i'm not making a, a very candid statement but this is this is what we generally understand now uh, going back to something uh, doctor traditional classrooms like even i've seen one of the schools here in in coimbatore an international school children squat on the floor and you know while they learn it's mandatory for them to especially with core subjects like science and math i've seen the classroom i had the i was fortunate enough to go to the one of the classrooms a couple of years back children they don't have chairs and desks but they have this um, you know they squat on the floor and they have a small uh, uh, what do you call it a small table in front of them and over an open desk like the ones you find in the traditional uh, you know traders you know they they will have it so that's what they have do you think that going back to ropes is the way forward uh, you know because everything now we are going back to it because the amount of mooligay ki love people are like we are know the, the kind of herbs and uh, lifestyle which we discarded a couple of years uh, no decades back we are going back to that uh, you know kab so the kashayam and like you know like we were not not used to it but today people are just craving to have it so we are going back to roots so is this also kind of going back should classrooms be designed in for future like that if we want to adapt the new method like I mean, the the old method we want to bring in now so it should start in the early class that is less than 5 uh, standard 5 and less maybe you can adopt because when the child uh, attains that growth spurt the the, uh, the physical size might differ not everyone can adopt that squatting posture for long hours right if at all you want to start such things so maybe you start the early <laughs> Okay, yeah, start from the kindergarten when they go to next level then we continue that so like that you can start so that training early is easy always the children uh, during the younger age the bone is still uh, you know uh, it is uh, malleable though a bone is called as a rigid structure still it has a elastic nature which will be more you know pliable and bending and uh, still they attain the skeletal maturity you know the early days is malleable and soft so any 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 posture adaptation can be introduced in the early uh, class maybe not in the beyond standard 5 and now if at all you want to start during kindergarten or standard 1 2 3 4 you can start that can be considered uh, in collaboration with the parents uh, uh, opinion and all so sure. it is no harm in actually it is in fact it is uh, good to train them early for all we want to bring a change um we have had a very um, informative session dr gopal krishnan and sanjeev from krishna hospital we've had so many webinars and seminars uh, in the past and i'm sure that this is one of the best sessions that we have had so far the relevance is what makes any session significant today the session was so relevant for to ensure that learning is all about preparation of life and one of the ways of preparing yourself of life is to have a healthy 
lifestyle that includes considering human factors. Uh, since we are running short of time, uh, children, what you can do is, if you have any questions, please mail us and we will direct those questions to Ramakrishna Hospital and we will try to get responses from them and we will include those in our, while considering planning and scheduling the sessions for you. I thank, from the bottom of my heart, the entire crew of Ramakrishna Hospital, Ms. Purima, Mr. Omar Shankar, and of course, I need to thank Mr. Anmol, who from L Basics, who started the seat first, and uh, to all of us and my management, Dr. Pius Murthy, Mrs. Priya Murthy, uh, the Director of Marketing, Ms. Vaishwarya Murthy, and my entire management and fraternity staff, faculty, students, parents, and everyone. This one session, I didn't find anyone leaving after the break. And they were all attentive. Right from the beginning, we had that number and it's still going strong. So I'm sure that these sessions with the Ramakrishna Hospital is going to be to see more fruits in the future. Uh, if I there were if, any parents, do you have any questions? Like I can just take one or not two questions. I think if Mr. Gobel Gobel, uh, we can take Dr. Gobel. Just one or two questions. Any parent would like to have some questions? And uh, I would like to add this point. See, uh, I'm practicing for the past uh, almost 20 years now. See, I, I, I'm one person who will insist my patients when they come for back pain, I train them exercise for the neck and shoulder and knee. They used to wonder why this fellow is telling when I come for back, uh, he's teaching exercise for the neck. See, because it's all uh, the degeneration. The degeneration is an ongoing process. The wear and tear, which, will have, which won't happen in one fine day. But the manifestation will happen in one fine day. See, not only will get a neck pain or back pain or shoulder pain, but the pathology that is an ongoing process, the repeated micro injury, it's called repeated micro trauma, which will happen uh, like, you know, the policeman who's standing in the uh, traffic, for standing long hours, they, they develop a varicose veins in the subsequent 10 years down the line. So likewise, teachers, school teachers who are standing, you know, they also tend to develop a varicose veins in the future. Right. So likewise, every profession will have its own occupational hazard. So how to escape those things? See, simple formula. You start doing the core exercise earlier. That is, younger age, you should train the students, either a boy or girl, uh, you know, so you should train them to uh, do certain exercise every day. Every day means uh, at least five days a week. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes minimum to be spent. So by doing core exercises, the wear rate, the degeneration is being completely postponed. You cannot prevent it or escape it. But definitely we can postpone it. See, often I see people, uh, middle-aged women coming to me with back pain, neck pain at the age of 35 which we were seeing at the age of 55, 60, 70. Whereas the degeneration is uh, happening more early these days. Because why women or men, the generally the middle age, up to 35, the bone will have a density going up. From 35, it will decline. So how to maintain that uh, the maximum bone density for longer years only by doing certain core simple exercise. The sports, involving in sports is not the exercise. It is an entertainment most of the time. See, even sports, no, I see a lot of injuries. See, uh, in our, we have a SNR Sports Academy. The CSK two players are from our academy. See, okay. Yeah, the Marina and Jagadish, two players are from our sports academy. And in fact, I'm the official uh, uh, SNR uh, cricket club. I'm the official sports doctor. See, because I tell every, because I myself, I used to play third division and Chennai second division. I'm a left arm bowler, right hand batsman. And I'm a football player and athlete too. That should I'm 43 now. Till this time, I have uh, never sustained a major injury, though I have uh, sustained small, small minor injuries. Because I we I do the core exercise before starting my game. See, even in, in profession, uh, professional sports, you should do the core exercise before you start the game. Generally, you can escape injuries, or that is your best effort to escape injuries. So please, children, you try to follow. Even for the parents who are watching now. See, I would recommend them to start exercises every day. If you want to avoid meeting us often, that is the only way. 
So, and weight management, the another thing which you, you know, often I see, uh, overweight. See, this lockdown, even I have put 8 kg weight. And with my help of my wife, probably I reduced it now, you know, got gone back to the same. So, but uh, the thing is, weight, this lockdown is, you know, many people have put the minimum 10 kg weight. So, please uh, try to cut down your extra calories, your form, uh, yeah, junk food, and in, see, uh, probably uh, everyone uh, with uh, so much free time, seeing online cookery is everything, and they start preparing new, new dishes and they happily heating and putting weight. And end of the day, they come to us with the back pain, simple, simple problems. See, avoidable problems. See, the worldwide research is happening. See, every day, joint replacement surgery happening in the world, millions and millions of dollars are spent for joint replacement surgery. So, the research is happening in every developed countries how to prevent joint uh, replacement, or in other words, how to prevent arthritis. So, that is the research happening nowadays. So, simple two answers have been derived. One is uh, weight, optimal weight for the height that has to be achieved early. And the other two, second one is to do the core exercises. The neck means neck has core muscles, back, shoulder, knee. Likewise, every joint and every part of the body will have core exercises, which our therapy department is one of the established first physiotherapy colleges of ours. And we have a trained uh, a big unit of physiotherapy. And so we always insist when the patient comes for knee pain, we start neck exercises. So we try to aim, we aim for preventing the problem. So that is the way it should be. So for school children and parents, so weight maintenance and basic exercise very much. And ergonomics naturally, what is ergonomics? It's nothing but it is comforting oneself at their work. When you say injury. So you you make sure make sure that you are comfortable in your classroom or online classes or even when you are a homemaker, you are, you are preparing a dish, whatever. See, self, so you know, it's individualized. You create your own ergonomic situation. That's it. So, and I, I thank the Manchester School Management. I thank Swati Madam and Health Basics for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so, thank you, sir. Let us meet us often like webinar, not as a patient. <laughs> uh, I uh, request uh, Ms. Aishwarya, uh, the director, uh, is here with this. Do you have anything to add on or do you want to comment something, Ms. Aishwarya? Uh, i just like to say thank you. Thank you for the session. It was very informative. I'm sorry I joined a bit late, but it was very informative. And like you said, um, we'd meet more often virtually. <laughs> yeah. And. Thank you, Rajesh, sir, for this wonderful session organizing this. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Prince Joy, uh, one last question from Prince Joy. Sir, uh, how to keep our muscles active when we are attending online classes? <laughs> See, uh, this won't happen. Like we are not all robots. Where you can switch on the, uh, you know, switch it on, keep the muscles active. See, it doesn't happen. You should inculcate the habit by doing constant exercises. Uh, voluntarily, when you're attending classes, there are certain active chairs available. I've uh, shown in some uh, images. So you can search for the online uh, products available or you can even go directly. See, there are certain active chairs available. Let's say, see, the, the rocker bottom chair is an active chair. So when you sit on a rocker bottom chair and uh, attend the class, you know, the, the rocker bottom will keep your muscles always in taut condition. So the core muscle will, core muscles will be in contraction all the time. So likewise, there are standing sit chair, uh, not like you know, there are a lot of designs in there. So for you, for your question, you have to constantly practice this habit. So not in one day you'll get there. When you constantly practice it every time and again, over a period of time, you'll develop the habit of active sitting. So you'll constantly keep your muscles or take a break in between. Once the one session is over, uh, our therapists have uh, showed some videos. No, you practice those exercises in between. And yoga is one of the best exercises which you learn yoga and practice every day in the morning. Uh, the first thing to do in your day. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, all of you, for attending. Thank you, Ramakrishna Hospital. I mean, thank everyone from Bottom of Mark and Manchester International School is always there for the students and for the welfare and well being of all its staff as well and the parents. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir.